Hello ladies and gentlemen, I am Veos, and I hope that you're all doing well today. Before we get started, I wanted to turn your attention to a small video that I made called Flight of the Phoenix. It's a video that the YouTube algorithm has just completely dropped. I think that's because of the fact that it's only like 5 minutes long. I'm sure that many of you who come to my channel to watch this kind of stuff would appreciate it and have a great time watching it. In the future, I'm looking at making a type of behind the scenes video that I'm sure a lot of you would like to watch. So I'll leave the link of the video in the description below. And I hope you all enjoy watching it as much as I enjoyed making it. So now, on with the show. This is going to be part two of the SSRT uh, build, I guess you can say. So at this point, I'm trying to streamline the design. It's getting to our, where I want it to be, but unfortunately, it does have a slight problem of, you know, exploding every now and then. The thing that I wanted to do was to try to toughen it up some more, make it less crackeny, because this thing is picking up a very large craft and kind of moving on the ground, it, that kind of weight tends to make things break apart. I needed some sort of tread, some something heavy on the bottom to keep it from blowing up, um, like a uh, girder or maybe one of those um, landing pads that they got. Right now you can see that I'm having problems. <laughs> no, but you can see that I'm trying to streamline it so that I don't have to transfer weight from one side to the other. That was, that was my big thing. I, I didn't really want to be constantly shifting the weight from one side to another. I want it to be smooth. I want it to work under like one keystroke. I know that was a lot to ask, but um, I've, I got it to the point where I only needed, I didn't need to shift the weight back and forth anymore. I got it to the point where all I needed to do was pretty much raise up one side and raise up the other side and have it tilt over slowly so that it raised the whole thing up in one go. In order to make the thing stronger on the bottom, I ended up using the girders because the little, um, I guess you could say the landing pads, they weren't strong enough. The thing was so heavy, even with all the gas tanks pretty much empty, that the whole, it, would, it would start shaking, start rattling on the bottom. And I was afraid that that was going to pop off, it was going to summon the Kraken, it was going to make the whole thing blow up later on. And even though I tried different variations and techniques, it really didn't really stick well with me. So I ended up using the, uh, the girders instead. <laughs> the tank is like, hi there, come here often. So that didn't work because unfortunately the SSRT ran into the actual launch platform. Another problem which I had to remedy later on. The idea that I was trying to do was if I couldn't hold it in place with the claw because then it would run into itself or that's what I believed at the time. So I figured maybe I can prop it up and then disengage the claw but have something underneath the craft to prop it up under its own weight. Uh, I did something very similar uh, when I first started working on this a long time ago where the craft had an extra set of gears underneath of it so when it was propped up the gears would come out and it would hold its own weight uh, standing straight up. So this extra piece would be kind of like a footstool. It would rotate around underneath the craft, get up underneath of it. And so that way I could let go of the craft from the claw and it would kind of fall or prop itself up on this type of footstool. The problem that I was having, of course, was the fact that the SSRT would need to be completely redesigned in order to utilize this type of uh, footstool or standing pad or however you want to name it right now. And I just didn't have the energy or the time to redesign the bottom half of the SSRT in order to do that. So the next bright idea that I had was to try to put multiple claws on the actual craft so that the craft itself wouldn't have to rely on just one claw. It could 
it could potentially be held together or held on the platform by multiple claws. Because I know that after a while this thing is going to get heavy when I start fueling it up. And I will not too sure how much weight the claw could actually handle before snapping off completely. So for now, I'll be testing it with the single claw method. But I'm really thinking that I'm going to have to end up redesigning the SSRT to be able to stand up by itself in order to support its own weight. So for now, I was going to put that problem on the back burner until I cross that bridge. I needed to build a craft that could actually deliver a payload into the belly of the SSRT while it was propped up. I really thought about using uh, robotic parts for this, but I knew that robotic parts were kind of weak when it came to very, very, very heavy items. So I was reluctant to use robotic parts at first, and I was going to go for a more of a, like a rocker type of mechanical design, kind of like the way the launch platform was built. So as you can see here, I was playing around with ideas as I was building it, kind of on the fly. I knew, I, hmm, I sort of knew what I wanted, but at the same time, I was open-minded to anything new that might have come up by accident. One of those, you know, happy little accidents. And uh, I kept my eyes open for it. And um, eventually, I caved in and used the uh, robotic parts. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, th this wasn't working, so let's face it, we needed the robotic parts. So what I did was I made a type of prop with the SSRT already attached to the launch platform. I could then use this file as a type of blueprint in order to figure out the dimensions of what I actually needed this loader to look like in order to operate correctly. Now, as we all know, uh, KSP uh, doesn't really like to create a closed circuit when it comes to craft, craft files. Um, so I was trying everything in the book. I was trying to maybe have the docking ports come together right at the end uh, to try to close this loop so that I wouldn't have two sides kind of dangling in between the middle. I tried using the claw, which seemed to work. It, it really did seem to work, but I couldn't, I, I didn't want to rely on it all the time. So I ended up using struts instead. But as you can see here, the arm did work because I, I started the root part on the very top and built the arm first, which led into the actual foundation of the craft. This allowed me to utilize uh, two of the servos instead of just relying on one. I figured, you know, maybe two servos would give it enough strength to do it, and indeed it did, barely, <laughs> but um, it ended up working pretty well, and it was kind of nice. I also, I also remember that you can take the parts, and you can, if you hit, um, go into their uh, properties, you can select same vessel interaction, which allows them to not sort of, you know, ghost into each other or clip into each other. They will bounce off one another like if they're two separate parts. Which is kind of nice, especially if you want like a a braking system for a very la large arm that may or may not stop when it goes all the way back. Right here I was trying to build just a really quick makeshift truck that would uh, bring the payload over to the loader so the loader could grab it and then put it onto the craft. But ultimately, I don't think I'm gonna go for the truck approach like I did a long time ago. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna have all the parts on a type of rack, if you will, that the loader will come up to, hook on, pull the part off, and then load it up on the, tr on the uh, SSRT and all the parts will just be on this type of loading rack that the uh, loader can approach and hook up 
to the part and pull it off of it. I mean, we'll see, because I know a lot of people liked the whole uh, 18-wheeler design that I had going on. But for the sake of simplicity and for the sake of part count, I think the loading rack approach might be a little better. Right here I was having trouble putting the cargo into the cargo bay and it was about this time I realized that I that I needed the loader to have some sort of ability to raise and lower the cargo while it's vertically uh, vertical not bring it up and down but literally like an elevator bring it up and down does that make sense anyway but that's pretty much all I've got for today uh, Thank you so much for watching and thank you so much for being a part of this channel. And uh, please leave a like and even consider subscribing if you're into this kind of thing. Uh, I am Veos and I will talk to you all later in the next, next video. Bye for now.